I, let me leave you with some thoughts here. Okay, please um, do. There's a section here on race and color, which is another thing with the, the variation of what we have in the world. Just a, a point I want to make. When European anthropologists started running through Africa and started describing what they saw, um, their urge was to say, everyone in Africa is this thing, and they have dark skin, woolly hair, and that is a thing. And they called it a race, and they called it the Negroes, okay? And this is our attempt to classify into few categories something that might actually, in real life, be on a spectrum. We know that the human species began in Africa. And everybody who populates everywhere else in the world came out of Africa to do that. What that tells you is that the genetic diversity within Africa as the origin of our species is greater than it is between any other two people anywhere else in the world. But because the anthropologists were not thinking genetic diversity, they're thinking skin color. They put them all in one bin. But if you have the most genetic diversity, then in practically every way humans vary, you would find the extreme of that in the African continent. Where would you find the tallest people in the world? Watusi tribe of Africa. How about the shortest people in the world? Pygmies. The pygmies. Not even that far away. Right. Geographically. They have the same skin color. So the Europeans said these are one group of people, one race. Um, where might you find the slowest people in the world? Well, no one looks for them. Where would you find? There's no races to find the slowest people. How about the fastest people? Africa. Okay. People of African descent have dominated the long distance as well as the sprint, two completely different physical abilities. Oh, but they're all dark-skinned people. They're all Negroes, okay? Where would you likely find the dumbest person in the world? Africa. How about the smartest person in the world? Africa. How about the Egyptians? The From Europeans Africa. did not look for people smarter than they were, okay? And to this day, where they find evidence where that might have been the case, you have people saying aliens did it. Mm. Egypt is, of course, in Africa. Yeah. A brilliant civilization. Oh, my gosh. While Europeans were still either disemboweling heretics or whatever the hell they were doing, I was even before that, uh, thousands of years ago. So my point is, if you don't look for it and you don't find it and you're going to create a map of humans of the world, you're going to put yourself at the top. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to write things like this. Uh, who do you want to hear from? Thomas Jefferson or Francis Galton? Jefferson. Jefferson. 1785. Speaking of the Negroes. Comparing them by their faculties of memory, reason, and imagination... It appears to me that in memory, they are equal to the whites. In reason, much inferior. As I think one could scarcely be found capable of tracing and comprehending the investigations of Euclid. And in imagination, they are dull, tasteless, and anomalous. What, what is Euclid? I honestly don't know how many Euclid-fluent white people Jefferson knew in the original Amer American colonies. Euclid invented a geometry. Oh. Okay, Euclidean geometry is ancient Greece. And his books still exist to this day. So he's saying the black slaves don't know Euclid, can't figure out Euclid. <laughs> well, they haven't been educated. <laughs> well, regardless, how many, so how many white farmers... In 1785 USA, also were New Euclid. Yeah, no, zero. Just, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, I, but whatever were his observations and objections to black people, he had no hesitation continually mating with at least one of them, producing six children. Um, so you know what I did here? Uh, oh, oh, then there's a guy who wrote a whole book comparing black people and white people. 
a book that was used into the 1960s. It was called The Origin of Races by Carlton Kuhn. Um, he wrote, if Africa was the cradle of mankind, which he recognizes, it was only an indifferent kindergarten. Europe and Asia were our principal schools. So this is, these are people putting themselves at the top. He's white, so he's got to put white people at the top. Then I thought, suppose anthropologists were black racists instead of white racists. What would they write? What would they come up with? Well, also what he's saying is ridiculous because if, if it's kindergarten, how did they do the pyramids? <laughs> it's, it's the most complex the, structures the, the, ever known uh, to man. Hold on. So well, we can't reproduce today. No, got, no, it's, All of us. My only point is when you have that mindset and you have to put yourself at the top and all people with dark skin are one entity, you're not looking for people smarter than you. You're not. Uh, there's other evidence here. The, do, do you realize that the people who get the highest scores on standardized tests in England are, are people, immigrants from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. And these are, their kids outscore all the, 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 the quote, native white people in, in the town. If you're not looking for them, you're not finding them. It just doesn't, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's all here in this chapter. And all I'm doing is bringing science to it. That's all I'm doing here.